What's up YouTube? Welcome to Chronicles. I missed you guys. It's been about a month since my last video and today we're going to do our first ever car review and car video. But before that, let's do a wristwatch check. What am I wearing today? Make a Seamaster ceramic in blue to match the beautiful blue ocean in Miami. Beautiful day here. Today we're going to be talking about my BMW M240i. In one week, I will be returning this beautiful machine. It's a lease, and I wanted to do a nice review, a three-year long-term review. I haven't really seen a detailed one on YouTube, so I want to be the guy, first guy to do a video on this amazing car. In my opinion, one of the best sports cars under $50,000. Let's do it. Right, guys well you're probably wondering how fast is this thing well I'll show you no formalities press start button put the car into drive put it into sport plus turn off traction put your foot all the way on the brake gas it up launch control and that's how you launch an M240 all right guys well now we're here sitting in traffic uh, you know it's Miami so we don't have that much space we do launch control every three seconds but that's a good way to start the video and talk about the performance of this vehicle. Under the hood, we have BMW's latest inline six cylinder with a turbocharger on it, the B58 engine, it's in the new Supra. Uh, I'll talk about that on the video. But um, this car has 340 horsepower and 370 foot pounds of torque uh, stock. Now, I have this car tuned, so I have a JB4 stage one. It's making somewhere upwards of 400 horsepower, 400 torque. Let's just say that just to, you know, you know we'll, we'll round it up. Um, so this car is relatively quick. Now I've had this car now three long years. I've loved every minute of it. Although there are some, you know, some cons. Not every car is perfect. Um, and I'm gonna start with the cons right away, just because I want to get them out of the way. Because this car is so good in a lot of uh, other re other ways. So the first con, in my opinion, is the exhaust. <laughs> The exhaust is very, very, very quiet. Um, that's because, of course, the M2 exists, and I think that the M2 is, you know, the, the halo car at the time, so they didn't want to step on its kind of feet, I guess you could say, with a, you know, louder, kind of almost as fast car under it for less money. So that's the first thing. The exhaust is way too quiet. That could be fixed after market or, you know, muffler delete if you want to be a little more aggressive. Uh, the second thing that I don't like about this car is the vagueness of the steering. Now, if we're in sport mode here, put it in sport mode, move the paddle to the, to the left, uh, the steering does get heavier, but it's a very artificial feeling, and there's this numbness on center. When you get the car on center, and I notice this a lot when I'm tracking the car, because I have had some track miles on this vehicle, um, the car just has this strange, strange numbness in the middle. You get on it, you move the wheel, and you just don't feel anything. The steering rack is basically dead. Uh, the M2 competition, the new one kind of fixes that problem, but uh, that's something you really can't fix. I mean, that's just part of the car. It's engineered that way. The third thing is no limited slip diff in the back. That's kind of frustrating. You can't add it for another $2,500 on the port when you order the car, but I mean, the car at that point will be you know, almost 50,000 at that point you should just get them to competition so you know that's up to you if you want to do that or if you want to just stick with the electronics of diff well those are the, those are the those are the cons really that's those are the cons that I personally have some will say the interior is dated yes there are new BMWs that have more tech and all that but I personally appreciate this interior because it's very classic it kind of harkens back to the old BMWs from the 2000 you know like 2002 BMWs or the uh, you know E30 and that ethos and you still have modern tech the car has tech it's just it's kind of hidden it looks kind of old-fashioned um, but it has tech like for example the the steering cluster some of it is digital we have iDrive which is fantastic iDrive has always been good and you know it has the tech it has a fantastic audio system our Harman Carmen is amazing some people think it needs to be a little more powerful and bassy um, I value my hearing so <laughs> I'm very happy with it and you know the amount of sound it puts out and the performance, I mean, this is what you buy this car for. This is a performance car, this is a sports car. This is kind of BMW's entry-level sports car. And what you buy this for is the speed. Now, zero to 60 stock numbers on BMW's website is 4.4 seconds. Uh, people have gone as low as 4.2. So the car is quick, the car is pretty quick. And you know, it's rear-wheel drive, so you can slide it out, you can turn off traction control, 
you know, have a good time. And the car will, you know, keep you safe. It's a very easy car to kind of get the rear loose, drift it a little bit, and you're never really scared. Uh, and that comes to another thing. If you want a daily drivable car that's fun, that's, you know, very comfortable, very luxurious in the sense that the ride is very nice, you can drive it every day and it won't beat you up. I think this is the best car to get under 50000 simply because right now, you know, we put it in comfort, the car feels amazing, very comfortable on the road, you put in sport, everything tightens up, gets a little aggressive. And then that engine, that inline six, when you're not on it on the highway, you can get 40 miles a gallon. I mean, name, I know some four cylinders that put out 100 less horsepower, we can't get that gas mileage. It's really, this engine is a masterpiece. Um, and you know that kind of comes around to the competition. You know what competes with this car? Well, you have the Mercedes and the Audis of the world, but in my opinion, they don't really compete with the, with this car. Uh, mostly because they've gotten kind of big, and they're all front wheel drive based. Uh, you know the CLA is front wheel drive based. Uh, the Audi, I think RS3 is also front wheel drive based. So they transitioned them to all wheel drive for the performance models. And if you want real wheel drive, this kind of long hood, short rear deck kind of car. You're not really looking at all-wheel drive cars. You're looking at Camaro Mustang for this price range, under $50,000. So how do those cars compare? Well, in my opinion, I would go for this car. And I'm not just saying that because I own the car. Uh, for a couple reasons. Uh, this car, straight line performance and around you know around the track can kind of keep up with them. I'm assuming around the track, if they have a one LE package and all that, they're a little, it's a little slower. Um, but the straight line speed is almost there uh, just because the torque comes on very early. That 370 foot pounds of torque comes on around 1200 RPM. So the car is quick and you can tune it very easily. You spend 100 bucks, 200 bucks, you get a tune, and you're up more horsepower. So the, the tunability is there. Second, you don't see these as often as a Camaro or a Mustang GT. I mean, I see Mustang GTs every day. I literally go to a parking lot, I see 20 Mustang GTs and Camaros. So the benefit of this, you're kind of in a more unique car, not everyone has it. You're getting the gas mileage, you're getting the smaller, nimbler feeling, which is, you know, I always rave about, if you know me about cars, I love that. I love small, nimble, sharp cars, this is that. Those cars feel a little more boaty. Although they're very good handling cars, I do love those cars, but this has the edge, in my opinion, in that. The downside, of course, is you're paying for it money. Uh, this car has a starting price around 44000 That's around the same starting price as a uh, Mustang GT without... No, that is a Mustang GT with the premium package. So you're, 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 this is the base for what, a, for what is the loaded version of a Mustang GT. So what you're paying for is the badge. I mean, yes, the BMW is expensive. That's what they're known for. Um, but in that sense, I think it's worth it. I think it's worth it to be different to not be like everyone else. Are you gonna miss out on the V8? Yes, you will. Um, but this car kinda compensates with that in a lot of things. For one, this eight-speed ZF transmission is fantastic. Uh, it's almost dual clutch fast, almost shifts you know, as, as fast as an M4. Um, and you know, eventually as the car you know, gets tuned and people kind of crack these transmissions, they'll be able to make it shift even faster probably. And to me, I have no complaints about transmission. You, know, you press the paddles, if I were to get on it now, and just you know, accelerate, press the paddle, press the gas, the car you know, shifts instantly. I mean, taking some corners here. I mean, the car is just addicting to drive. It's so fun, you can really push it. And since it doesn't have a thousand horsepower, um, like all these new cars have, uh, you can kind of push it on public roads and ring it out, whereas, you know, the Mustang, the Camaro, you're on it for a little bit, and once you get it to 7,000, you're probably going to jail at that point. You know, you're breaking the speed limit, and, you know, you're just, you just you can't really ring out the car as much. And really, that's the fun of this car. The point of this car is rear wheel drive. You can slide it, have a good time with it, bring the rear out, um, you know, get good gas mileage, have good, you know, decent tech, have an interior that, you know, may not be all leather and all that, but it has a nice solid feeling to it. It feels well built versus those cars, the Mustang and the, and the Camaro, they don't feel as well built as this. Um, you get, you know, a classic BMW engine inline six. And uh, yeah, guys, I mean, there's nothing else really to say. I've said the cons, the pros, you know, I will be returning this car in a week. I am very sad. I love this vehicle, but you know, time to move on. And then once I get my new car, we'll do another video. But yeah, man, if you guys are in the, in the market for a BMW M240, like I said, I think the best sports car under fifty thousand dollars. I used. You can pick them up in the uh, thirty thousand dollar range, low mileage with warranty, um, and even the new iDrive. The twenty eighteen's enough. Have a new iDrive with a touchscreen and all that. So thirty k. I, I mean, I would take this over a BRZ if you're looking for a small, lightweight or relatively lightweight uh, sports car with some balls. You know, the BRZ has no balls. Uh, this car, you know, you can tune it and it already has you know a decent amount of power stock. 
So yeah, I think this is the best car at 50,000 if you want a sports car. And uh, man, it's a really underrated car. I think people really gotta wake up and start buying these up because they're gonna be a classic in my opinion. But yeah guys, that's about it for today's video. Thank you for watching. I know I've been slacking on the videos. I'll come back heavy this, I have Thanksgiving break now. I'm gonna come back with a bunch of videos, a bunch of car stuff. I'll film my new car and then, you know, some more watch stuff. So stay tuned. And, uh, you know, a store might be coming soon. You know, if you guys are interested in any watches, it might be your guy. So, yeah, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Have a wonderful day and hit that like and subscribe button.